Happy Friday! Welcome back to the Underground Broadcast! Cheers! Aw, oh, yeah! I got a, a joint lit up. I got my beer popped open. We're ready to roll! Cheers, Super Saiyan Joku! Here we go! Hit it for your ass! I want to have the world! The world's most comfortable pair of ultra soft! <laughs> Cheers, Joku! Thank you for being here tonight, you motherfucker. It's been a good week, sort of. Started off shitty. Uh, man, I'm not gonna lie. I almost hit a kid this week. These fucking, fucking kids. Get out of high school or middle school. Where the fuck? The idiots on their phones. And they're just, just walking around, staring at it. Crossing the street. Not even looking both ways, just staring at the phone like that. And I was turning, and I almost hit this kid, and I fucking hit the brake. You know, I was like, fuck. And when I did that, the car behind me slammed into me. I was fucking pissed. I got, I pulled into the gas station, you know, the, the chick behind me pulled in too. I got on my car, and the chick's all like, oh my god, and she wanted to talk to me. I was like, get out of the way. I went over there and grabbed that kid. Kid, come here, you son of a bitch. You realize what you just did. He's like, what What happened? And I told him, you fucking dickhead. You're crossing the street on your fucking cell phone. And I almost ran over you. And because I stopped and saved your life, she hit me from behind. I told him, I should have run over your ass, you little piece of shit. He was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, sir. And he was scared as fuck. And I was all like, God damn, I'm gonna call the cops and tell them to arrest your ass for fucking causing accidents crossing the street, you little piece of shit. Oh, shit. No, sir. No. He was all scared. The lady comes over here and starts talking to me. And I'm, she, the, the kid comes up to me. Sir, how much will it cost? Will $200 do? And I'm like, give me your money, you silly son of a bitch. Get the fuck out of here. And I took his 200 bucks and I told him to get the fuck out of my face. The lady didn't have an ID or insurance and her bumper fell off. And I told her, what do you want to do, bitch? Because my car just got a couple of scratches. You got all fucked. And that kid already gave me money. She's like, I'm fine if you're fine. I'm like, all right, well, get out of here, you whore. I got in my car and I drove away, all pissed off. And I flicked him off the way Tupac when Tupac left. And he stuck his head out the window and he was going like that. I did that when as I left. Fuck you. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Goddamn kids nowadays are so with their TikToks and their IGs and their motherfucking Facebooks. They don't even pay attention when they're causing a goddamn street. Idiots. Anyways, I got off easy. I got $200 and I didn't even need to fix my car because it just got scratched. The other bitch's car got all fucked. It's shit. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, fuck. Gomer Kyle's here. Cheers, Gomer. Let me hit it for you, you son of a bitch. What's your name, scumbag? Gomer Pyle. Private Pyle, I'm going to give you three seconds to wipe that stupid-looking grin off your face, or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull fuck you! One, two, three! Shazam! Cheers! Gomer! You're the shit! All right. Happy Friday, motherfucker. I'm just trying to tell people you know, to raise your kids the right way. Teach them to cross the street without looking at their... Not to be looking at their phones, but they crossing the streets. Fucking goddamn idiots. Anyways. Uh, uh, for, uh, again. Advisory. This is the emergency broadcast channel. Uh, we do have three channels at the moment. Uh, we... Next Sunday, we're going to broadcast from the illegal underground broadcast channel. AEW is double or nothing. It's going to be badass. You guys want to come and watch it with, with us next Sunday, May 26th. You know what it is? 
watch shit here legally. That's why it's called the Illegal Underground Broadcast Channel. That's how we do what we do, what it is that we do. <clears throat> and in two weeks' time, we will not be broadcasting from the emergency broadcast. In two weeks' time, we will be back to our main channel. And maybe we can get more than three fucking people watching us live like we used to. God damn it. We're going to get it like 40 people watching us and now we're back to like just YouTube motherfuckers and shit. Everybody thinks you guys are a paid shills because you got little wrenches. <laughs> You're the only ones here. Anyways, now I don't pay these motherfuckers. I don't have money to be paying nobody. I try to make some money on YouTube. Try to make more and more and more fucking videos and shit. And nothing's working. But anyways, keep an eye out for that ass. As far as tonight's show, we got a lot of ass for you tonight. A lot of uh, X-Men 97, DC rumors, a lot of comic book nerd ass. And of course, we always start off with the celebrity ass. Stormy Daniels ass this week. So get ready for that shit. But we did have a lot of fucking comments. Because guess what, guys? We actually made it past 600 subscribers! in a row we gone viral with bullshit we went viral with rick flair and we got past 600 subscribers oh yeah Woo! 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 all right that's enough celebrating that's enough i never thought we were gonna get that far I'm telling you, ever since he who should not be named left the fuck out of here, we've been skyrocketing to the top. It's just a matter of time before we're on national television. I'm just letting you know you're going to be seeing me, this beautiful face, on billboards across America. When you're going to work, you're going to see me on a billboard to the man. Underground broadcast Friday nights. Ah, just you wait. It's going to happen. Sons of bitches. All right. We did get a lot of haters, like always, but that's okay, it's expected. This is America after all, the land of the haterisms. So uh, let's get started with the comments. Again, these are social medias. Twitter. Oh, it is officially X.com. I cannot call it Twitter. I'm going to have to change the logo there. Son of a bitch finally did it. He changed the URL, fellas. It is X.com. So I got to change the logo there. For X, it is Son of Man, 665. For IG, it's at the Underground Broadcast with underscores. And for TikTok, which is not going to last long because the Chinese are going to fucking not sell it to Americans. So they're going to kick it the fuck out of America. Fuck you, TikTok. You ban all our videos anyways. Uh, don't even sign up for TikTok. Fuck that. I don't even know why I'm putting it there. I got to stop uploading videos to that ass. Whatever you send me to my social medias, as long as it's... Before the, the fucking broadcast, I will put up here. Joku, you're cutting it short, son of a bitch. I get home and you're barely putting that shit on. Yeah, anyways, Joku sent me this ass today. He says, I'm feeling good, Friday. Bottoms up, gummy time. I had to show Gomer Cow some of my DBZ collection at the Underbound broadcast. So the man, you see the drink? Oh, yeah. Cheers, my flowers. Hashtag, whoa, pa oh yeah, hashtag. Live. Uh, hashtag THC edibles. Hashtag marijuana. Hashtag smoke weed every day. Cheers, Joe Coodles. Are a lot, a lot of fucking pops. He's got more. He's got, he's got some other more. He had more pictures of the other walls and shit, but there's too many pictures. Um. A lot of pops. Are some of them doubles? That's what I wanted to know. It's a lot of Dragon Ball Z. Ah, oh, you and your friend over there. Fucking Eric Rowan. You know Eric Rowan? I think that was Eric Rowan. Holy shit. Joku, you're friends with that son of a bitch. Let me see. Eric Redbeard and shit. That's the guy who used to be in the Wyatt family. There he is. And, he, and he's drinking. 
Fucking uh, Miller Lite. Oh, yeah. That's badass. Smoking those gummies over here. Hey, are these gummies, are they the, the kinds that make your dick hard? They sell those at the store now. They're fucking gummies. They're called mood gummies, they say. I'm like, eh. Just give me a Viagra. That's all I need. Fucking gummies and shit sticking to the side of your intestines and shit and ass. Fuck you. Cheers. Triforce Farms. 200 milligrams. A single source. Oh. Sour fruit. That's badass. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys drinking the good shit? Uh, man, I gotta say, man, that's a quite a pop collection. It looks like some of them are repeats, though. You got a few repeats, motherfucker. You like to collect extra ones. You should open some that are extras. I'm just saying. A lot of autographs. Oh, that's badass. That was about us. Kick ass. Hey, cheers to your friend, Eric Rowan. He's badass. All right, all right. Let's get in the comments because we went viral and we got a lot of comments, apparently. A bunch of fucking faggots. Uh... Came on here. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm turning to Melanie Mac. I, I I watch her now. Now that word's getting in back in my my mouth. It's a very dirty word. And I'm trying to make it into a compliment around here in this in this channel. When we say faggot, we mean a good thing. All right. Let's just say it like that. Cheers, faggots. Cheers. There you go. It's a good thing. All right. We're taking it back. We're taking it back for us. My whole life, I was called a faggot. It was a bad thing. But now it's gonna be a good thing. Sons of bitches. Cheers. Fuck you, Melly back. <laughs> I put under comments. <laughs> There's a bunch of got a troll account. I got a bunch of troll accounts. I put a one of the a one of the fucking uh uh comments I put a Hey little girl, you're hot as fuck. <laughs> I don't think she replied. <laughs> Anyways, let's read the comments here. Um Is this the first one? No, I gotta scroll down. I don't know why it, it, it went back up again. God damn it. Uh, here's the first one. This guy was the first one. Ken Chriswell. Oh, that's one of the widest names that's ever come up in this fucking channel. That's badass. Ken Chriswell. He's another Ken? Yeah. On the Richard Simmons versus Polly Shore. He says... Talk to the hand. It's a little hand emoji. Wait. Is he wearing makeup? Looks like one of those fat old ladies from the A sixties. I'm sure it's just a joke and it does and it doesn't wear ladies' makeup daily. Well, that of course I wear it daily, you dumbass. Well, you, you, you wake up in the morning, you look this good? No, you gotta put it on every day. You wash it off and put on a new one in the morning, you dumbass. This guy, this guy is probably one of those guys that was raised by two homosexuals. He didn't, doesn't know what it's like to be living in the house with a woman. You dumbass women put on makeup in the morning. All right. The slutty ones, they, 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 they just wear the same one from the night before. That's how it works. Not me. I'm not slutty. I get new, a new face every morning. Cheers. Can't Chris well. All right. Oh, same, same mental health, I guess, I don't know, mental health, same mental health, it's an anagram, he puts two words in one, anyways, on the Kenan Thompson, Dan Schneider connection, and shit, then motherfucker, oh, I knew it was gonna fucking do that. Every time I open somebody's comment because they, they write a whole paragraph or two because they, oh, I went to college so I can write more than three sentences. Every time I click on the read more, fucking YouTube puts me all the way to the top, you pieces of shit. Fucking college motherfuckers. Anyways, same mental health and his educated ass wrote, the most ridiculous theory I've ever seen. Keenan didn't have a bad experience on the set with him. Nah, man, he had a lot of orgasms with a finger in the ass. And it doesn't fit the narrative of Dan being the worst man in the world. Well, of course not. You gotta have people accusing you. 
you know, that you molested them for it to fit the narrative. If Keenan enjoyed the molestations, of course it's not going to fit the narrative. You dumbass. So, there has to be some sort of conspiracy behind it. Oh my god, how bad has this narrative gotten? Jesus, dude. Hey, 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 hey. Let me be the first to fucking set the record straight. I do not claim to be Christ. All right, you better not be calling me Jesus. All right, there's a lot of Jesuses where I grew up. I grew up over there in the Mexicans, and then there's a lot of Jesuses and shit. I'm not a Jesus. So the man is completely different. The sun in the sky. It's a big ball of fire that's going to explode one day and end all of life in the solar system. That's what it is. It's way different. Don't get it confused. Don't be calling me fucking Christ. You dumbass. Anyways... Yeah, I mean, like I said, all this can be explained because, you know, Kenan Compson, if he liked the molestations and the finger in the asses, then, you know, I mean, they're not going to be no accusations. No accusations only happens when you don't like what they're doing to you and shit. You don't agree to it. But if you agree to it and you're having fun and the other person's having fun and it goes on for years and you become best friends and then you're rich and famous with all the connections you made with fingers in the asses, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Consensual. That's called consensual mental health. Thank you. Just had to set the record straight, motherfucker. Cheers. Thank you for commenting. All right, let's see who else is next. Oh, a bunch of motherfuckers here. <laughs> Rocco and, and Gomer are having a conversation here. Under, under, uh, uh, Son of Man does impressions. Gomer Kyle, he goes. Who the hell needs that other dude when we have you in your vast catalog of impressions? Cheers, son of man, and cheers to the wo- For life. Hashtag woke son for life. Woke son. For life. <laughs> hey, cheers, diamond tripotine. Just put DMT, you dumbass. You know I can't say that word. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> you better not kill our cow. I'm gonna get pissed if you do. <laughs> I wish I was touched everywhere. I know you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know. You gotta learn somewhere. Is what I say. Cheers, Gomer. I've been working on my impressions. That's why I got good at Javier Bardem in that video. I did. I did that guy. I did I, uh, Ralph Innocent. I never seen him before, but I but I did his thing. Uh, I did a uh, uh, Javier. Me llamo Javier Bardem. Soy un actor. Um, uh, uh, Latino Americano. Javier Bardem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Heads or tails. Pick pick a pick a side. Oh, I don't want to pick a side. <laughs> that was the scariest scene in fucking any movie I've ever seen. Oh my god, he's a scary motherfucker. No country for old men. That that's like the best shit he's ever done. That's all I'm gonna say. The scariest motherfucker in the world. He would have killed it as Frankenstein. Too bad fucking Tom Cruise in that shitty ass universe flopped. Idiot. Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. And then, uh, you know, my, my name is Adam Driver. I, I was in Star Wars. I was also in the army. And apparently I'm related to Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Cheers, Adam Driver, you fucking 10 foot tall alien. All right, all right, let's move along. Too many comments, bunch of motherfuckers. Anthony Timmons on the Ric Flair fucked up again video. Drunk Rick is a bad Rick. Dude is funny as hell, though, even when he doesn't mean to be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just the way he is. You know, it's Ric Flair's Ric Flair. He's the man, you know, and you can't fucking get mad for him. It's like saying when Kanye acts up and people are all like, oh, there he goes again. Wait, what? That's the way he was born? Leave him alone. It makes life exciting to see people like that. You ever go out and you see that weird person making a scene over nothing? I like those people. There's a lady over there picking up an order at the Chick-fil-A. And they're super busy, by the way. And you see the screen over there in the computer where you see the orders. And there's, everything's in red because everything's backed up. 
you know, first it's green, and then yellow, and then red. That means you're you're fucking up. Once it's red, you're fucking up. It's late. Everything was in red, and the whole screen's full of a gazillion orders. And everyone's all freaking out because all these kids don't know how to do their job. They're fucking idiots. They're going to be replaced by robots one of these days, I'm telling you. Fucking dumbasses. Robots will be a lot faster, efficient, and cleaner when you get your food. These idiots are just slopping all over the place back there, fucking up your orders. But anyways, this lady's getting magical. I'm here for my old mobile order. And you're like, well, what, what, what's your order? And she just goes like that to the kid's face with her cell phone. And the kid's all like, uh, they're still making it, ma'am. And then she, the whole time, he leaves. And she just stays there with her hand like that. Like if it's some kind of fucking, like, lighthouse showing it like that. I'm like, this lady's crazy. You lady. They're going to take just as long for your orders. They're going to take for the rest of us. Let's fucking sit your ass down. Got a big one anyways. Ah, cheers. Thank you, Timmons, for commenting. Anthony Timmons also said on the Marvel's 15-year plan, too little too late, the ship is sinking, and the rats are taking over the lifeboats. Kabob by a Viger. Well, they got right of they got they blamed everything on uh what was that other guy? Bob Chapek. They blamed everything on Chapek. And then they fucking They got it rid of him and they brought this motherfucker back. But this guy is the one who came up with all the wokeness and the homosexual shit. Uh, so I don't know why he's getting off easy. Like he's the hero. Oh, he's come back to save the the, the dying uh, fucking brand. Motherfucker, he's the one who set the plan in motion that killed the brand. Fucking dumbasses, he's coming back. Oh, I'm gonna save it. What, with more homosexuality and lesbians? Oh yeah, that's gonna make you a lot of fucking money. Like it did the past five years. You idiot. You know, everyone's stuck at home and had a lot of money to spend. You would've thought they would've spent it all on your ass. But no, you have to do your bullshit. That's why, that's why, no, that's why you're failing with your Star Wars and Marvel and shit. The idiots. Anyways. DJ New Kid. Oh, yeah. I remember this motherfucker. Also on the Marvel 15-year plan, he just puts a little laughing emoji because he thought it was funny that they're fucking up. It's a sad, sad story. Thank you, DJ New Kid. I'm glad you're still watching, motherfucker. Oh, shit. This fucking Satanist. Rocco, fuck my life. Let me hit it for this dick. Let me, oh shit, I just, I'm dropping everything. Hang on. Oh baby, oh baby, oh baby. Rocco. <sighs> Sorry. This new keyboard, I gotta press shift something to make some stuff happen, so that's why it pisses me off. Rocco and the Javier Bardem video. Yo, Gomer, he's right. Fuck he who should not be named. <laughs> Fuck he who should not be named. Who needs that simp when you got the son of man? Uh, impersonist slash Marvel simp. Hey, fuck you. Slash podcaster. Hey, broadcaster, you son of a bitch. We're not doing a podcast no more. Slash rapper slash woke activist. Oh, he got a good one there. Slash Patriot. Oh, that's a badass one. Slash Androgynous Drag Queen. Non-binary drag queen, you idiot. Get it right. He says, all the best qualities wrapped up into one. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Oh, yeah. Cheers, Rocco. DMC says, why do you look like a Mexican version of Lu... What, what does that say? Lunel? Who's Lunel? You fucking guy, did you spell that right? I don't know what that means. Lu Lunel. Is that an anime? I don't know. Maybe you'll tell me later. If I look like something, I look like the Mexican Joker. From South Park, the real one. That's, <laughs> that's one of my favorite episodes, the Mexican Joker one. <laughs> that's such a good episode. 
I mean, it wasn't even one. It was like three or four episodes continuation, and it was like the Mexican Joker arc. Some black chick comedian. Oh, I gotta check her out. Is she woke? I bet you she's woke. Let me know if she's woke. I'll look her up. She not like that Asian chick, is she? The lesbian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 he goes, uh, Ric Flair. What's up? Oh, J, J Rizzo, 9226. What's up with the makeup? Whoa, whoa, what's up with it? It's on my face. You never seen a man with makeup? You idiot. You get out more. Go to the goddamn fucking store. There's, there's plenty of them everywhere. In the corners, too, at night. You should see them. Oh, yeah. J Rizzo. All right, all right. Let's keep going. Oh, Anthony Timmons on the James Gunn Ruins Superman video. Everything he gets his grubby little fingers on, James Gunn Ruins. And by the way, the Christopher Reese suit was the best. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, come on. I mean, for the time that it was, it was good. Christopher Reeve wasn't ripped as fuck. But he just looked like, just he looked like Superman, you know? Plain and simple. Um, Kate Key Cerosi. Cerose. Some shit like that. Uh, he replies to Timmons. He says, Well, I'm inclined to a free in terms of certain decisions. Suicide Squad and Peacemaker were brilliant. So was his Guardians trilogy. Look, I'll say you one thing. I like the first Guardians of the Galaxy. And I like the third one. Except for the ending. But I liked it. Um, Peacemaker was awesome. But it pisses me off that season two, according to James Gunn, will be season two of Peacemaker. But it will but season one is not canon to the new DCU. Which 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 makes no fucking sense. How is this a continuation of the first season? But the first season is not canon to this new universe. Fuck you, James Gunn. That's all I'm saying. He just, he's coming up with crazy ideas and shit. Uh, he just fucking, fucking up. James Gunn banged Pam, the office. I give him pro. He did? Really? Holy fuck. I had no idea he fucked Pam from the office. That son of a bitch. Now I'm mad. Fucking guy. I mean, I, I think every chick from the office was hot as fuck. Rashida Jones, Quincy Jones' daughter, was there for a little bit. And then she went on to that other Parks and Rec. And shit. That chick was hot as fuck. She was really exotic, you know. She, she had the green eyes and she looked black but white at the same time. Well, badass. Anyways, cheers to you motherfuckers having a conversation here about nerd shit. Oh! Next comment is none other than Houston Takas, very own Jose Trevino. Houston, Texas. Eh, soy americano mexicano, señor. Para que usted se cuadre, ¿ok? Puto. Cheers, Jose Trevino. DMT, what the fuck? Rashida Jones was the one that was going to marry Tupac. Are you fucking shitting me? I knew it was Quincy Jones' daughter, but I had no idea it was Rashida Jones. I thought it was the other slut. Holy fuck. That chick fucked Tupac. That's awesome. Imagine what her pussy feels like after he's been in it. Holy shit. Cheers! Uh, oh shit. That's a warning here. I put a warning here to tell me when I need a new beer. Because I just ran out. Let me get a new beer. Cheers! 
Jose Trevino from Houston, Texas says, What up, son? You effing guy, you. Hopefully this comment doesn't get deleted also. Apparently the tube likes to delete truthful comments. Yeah, they do. They like to censor people. Anyways, when I was talking about some dark guy, that's not who I was talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about that Canadian guy. I was talking about some guy on the comment section that was dissing your show. I don't remember his name, but it was Dart something. Anyways, great show. Hashtag. Live. Hashtag. World order. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you guys don't have to diss the haters. Let me just tell you, like, a thing about haters. Because you got them all over the places. Me, I've had them all my life. My own family's been haters. Haters to me. My whole life. They hate me. Every idea I have, everything I do, they're jealous of it. And that's all a hater is. Hater is someone who is jealous. Because they wish they could do what you're doing. Whatever they're hated on, they wish they could be doing it. Secretly. They envy you. So they don't have anything to do but to fucking talk shit. Try to make you feel bad because they wish they were doing what you were doing. The fucking haters. And they're always going to be haters the entire time you're doing something. Something productive. Because they're too goddamn lazy to get off their own fucking drunk asses and do something special for themselves. So they got to do fucking talk shit. Motherfuckers. We're changing the world with this channel. We're wokening the fucking minds of the generation that's been lost in the fog. Alright, we're doing something. Your haters coming on here. Oh, why is he wearing makeup? Because everyone else is. You idiots. Get out. Look around. Shit. What's up, bitches? It's 2024. It's a new age. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, let's keep moving on. There's more and more comments. Cheers, Jose Trevino. I love you. Oh... Jose Trevino also says James Gunn on the James Gunn is a Marvel spy video. It's weird right before you said that about Gunn being a plant. I thought the same thing. In fact, it also made me think of when Russo supposedly sent uh, was sent to destroy WCW. Anyways, I won't count Jim, James Gunn, Jimmy Gunn out until he makes a bad movie. The only thing holding him back now is his sick perverted mind. Yeah, yeah. And his ass jokes and shit. I just say one thing. He does have a fucked up sense of humor. He would he would be badass if he was on this podcast, but he's fucking up over there trying to make Disney movies. You idiot. Yeah, you know what? I mean, I, I talk a lot of shit about him. I, I honestly don't have any faith in him. But I will say, I cannot 100% call him an ass until I see the movie. Or at least the first trailer. Once the trailer releases, I'll know if it's ass. You know for a fact. Just say, just say. <laughs> Cheers, Jose Trevino. Thank you for commenting. You did. <sighs> all right, all right. We got more comments. It's a long fucking show. Uh oh, a new guy. Edster 2020. Ric Flair fucked up again. He says. I'm a wrestling fan from the old days, not today. I am new. I'm a new subscriber. Oh! I don't know why. I'll tell you why. Because you're attracted to this. Oh, yeah. He says, I was very into 80s metal. You just brought me back to that. New subscriber. Smiley face. And hey, why does everybody think I'm an 80s metal? I don't even like 80s metal. Judas Priest and, and uh, Iron Maiden and all that ass. Fuck you. In fact, Ozzy in the 80s was the worst Ozzy I've ever fucking experienced. Bark at the moon. <laughs> Fuck you. That's some of the worst shit to ever come out of some ass. All right. I like 70s metal and then skip the 80s and get your ass into the motherfucking 90s. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, But everybody says I look like 80s metal and shit. I mean, I always thought that that I was ripping off Axl Rose, and he was from the 90s. Sons of bitches. I don't know where you guys are saying that I got this 80s metal type of vibe. 
Maybe because I'm old and shit. I was in the 80s metal. You know, you know. Uh, uh, DMT says, at sure 20 is some some fat chick who banged the 90s bands. <laughs> hey, take it easy on the fucking guys who are commenting new subscribers and shit, motherfuckers. Cheers, y'all. Yeah, play nice, children. Ah. I really don't. I'm I'm not a big metals '80s '80s guy, you know. I remember this fake movie that came out. It was called Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg, and he had a fake band, and it was kind of telling the story of Judas Priest, but not really. It was badass, and and Zach Wild helped with the soundtrack and 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 they had new like songs completely made up for the fucking movie and the soundtrack the songs were badass uh i remember that shit and uh and zach wild fucking of course zach wild's a, the shit that's all i'm gonna say cheers Edster, thank you for being a new subscriber and taking us past 600. Oh, yeah. Cheers! Let's celebrate again for 600 fucking subscribers! Alright, alright, alright. That's enough of that shit. Let's keep going with this with, with, the, with, the, with the fucking comments. Rocco, fuck my life. I already played your intro, Rocco. I'm not playing it again. It says, holy fuck. On the Ric Flair video. 300 views. Son of man, Ric Flair is going to make this channel famous. He puts a laughing face. Cheers. Well, he did. Ric Flair got us to 600 subscribers. <laughs> That's enough. So thank you, drunk Rick. No, no, it wasn't Ric Flair. It was drunk Ric Flair. They got us to 600 subscribers. God bless that man. He got us a bunch of haters talking shit in the comments, but you know, God bless that man for getting us more subscribers. We're getting famous, fellas. And all we had to do was get rid of the racist white guy on the other side. Oh yeah, cheers! <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let's keep going. Oh, DJ New Kid on the James Gunn ruined Superman. He puts a hundred, 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 a hundred. Oh, Chad, DJ New Kid. I had trouble catching up with my burps and the drinkings and the smokings, y'all. It's too much. Gomer Kyle on the Ric Flair fucked up again. He went, woo, woo, because the guy forgot to wipe his boo, boo. Oh, yeah, cheers. Cheers, Gomer. D. Snyder. Yeah, Joku, that's what these guys are probably thinking. They probably look, they probably think I look like one of the, what were they called? <laughs> Twisted Sister. That's what they were called. Um, I was never even into Twisted Sister. You know, when they play that, that song on the radio, I mean, I jammed to it. No, we ain't gonna take it. We're not gonna take it anymore. Uh, but that's the only song I fucking know. I don't know jack jack shit about them motherfuckers. Besides, isn't that guy like a Biden lover or some shit? I don't know. Is it one of these motherfucking woke motherfuckers nowadays protesting? I, th I thought I heard some shit like that. T.S. R. Lots. Twisted Sister. Well, I mean, that's the only song I know. So, I mean, it's not like I'm a fan. I'll just tell you like that. Ah, Assisted Fister. <laughs> Gomer also says on the least Liam the Liam Neeson has joined the MCU with a certain set of skills 
Gomer says, at 599 subs. Actually, Gomer, we pass 600 subscribers! Oh. Woo! Woo! Oh, yeah. All right. That's enough of that shit. Uh, yeah. He says, as I write this, James Gunn is proof Feige was responsible for the MCU's early success, except for the last year's holdover Guardians of the Galaxy 3, the only successful Marvel release last year. This suit is hashtag shit. Maybe they work together, then apart. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Cheers, Gomer. You're the shit, motherfucker. Uh, the first 10 years were magical. Well, no, I'm not going to say they all were. I'm going to say that the real success of the MCU were the Russo brothers. They are the ones that made the best movies, the best stories, the best writing, the best decisions when it came to the goddamn movie franchise. By letting them go... I don't know what they asked for, or maybe they just did, they were, they were tired, but that's when it all went to shit, when the Russo brothers left. Plain and simple. That's just my opinion. Cheers, Gomer. Thank you for that comment. Oh, James Gunn. Oh, there's a new guy, two new guys. Volera Spear, one day ago, says... J get over it. If anyone ruins Superman, it's Hack Snyder. Oh, <laughs> that's funny, actually. <laughs> and then Joseph Handy Bode got mad that he insulted the great Zack Snyder. And he replied to this guy and he said, How? Superman that has powerful, that is powerful and fast like the comets? Let me guess, you never read them. Oh, the Snyder fan came out to defend uh, their hero. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers getting into fights in the comments. Uh, this channel's growing. It's happening, fellas. We're real. Shit. Cheers! <laughs> To all you haters and unbelievers, it's happening! All right, all right, let's move on. Enough of that ass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Gober Kyle of the Marvel's 15-year plan says, I wish they had a 15-second plan just because I'm tired of hearing the weatherman Robert Eigert then you have the certified coffee run specialist for Lucas and Spielberg, Kathleen Kennedy, who I believe destroyed the Star Wars franchise. Of course, just to spite George. <clears throat> no, she genuinely thought her lesbianism was going to be a hit. But she fucked up. I said good riddance. In any case, I'll be dead in 15 years anyways. Cheers! <laughs> Fucking Gober. Cheers, Gomer. Let's move on to the next comment because we still got a lot more. The motherfuckers. We got right. Look, look at all this fucking ass. Anyways. Um, on the Ric Flair. <laughs> There's people having conversations, getting mad at each other and shit. But anyways, on the Ric Flair fucked up again video. Uh T Press 74. Hey, fuck you, DMT. That's not true. Uh not anymore. Alright. We all grow out of our faces. Anyways, I'm old now. Uh, T Press 74 says, at least get the story right. Quotation marks. Allegedly. Rick was looking through the stalls and seen the guy was texting and they had words. Then that's when the video happens. Well, T Press. 
I'm not gonna fucking rip you a brand new asshole because these videos that uh, you saw is our expert videos and they're cut short to three minute segments and so this was probably like a 15 minute shit that we were talking about and I cut it down to three minutes so I cut a lot of stuff out and I cut the stuff that you just said because I'm pretty sure I explained it that Rick went to the bathroom and saw somebody there and didn't wash his hands and he got pissed um, but these videos are cut down to give you the jits of it, basically. If you want the full story, click on the link to see the full podcast, T-Press. There, I'm not going to get mad. I'm just going to forgive you because you didn't know. Now you know. The more you know. Cheers! <laughs> Thank you for commenting, you dick. Let's move on. Oh, my butt's been wiped. Ah, oh, yeah. My my butt's been wiped, but I'm talking about the guy who commented. That's his name. My butt's been wiped. Commented on Ric Flair fucked up again. And again, I will stress out. My my butt has been wiped, wiped and licked clean. All right. So none of y'all to worry about that. Since a bitches. Anyways, this guy says, Ric Flair is cool like me, Biden 2024. Oh, he has a picture with Biden taking a selfie with him. <laughs> I like the ice cream myself. I still have relations with the judge. I would still have relations with the judge chick, the fat redhead one. Oh, the older one. Yeah, why no no, why no no judge? Oh, yeah. So would I, motherfucker. <laughs> she got a big ass. <laughs> he goes, she could sit on my lap and tell me what her grandpa said the good old days. Oh, yeah. When I was young, we didn't have air conditioning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cheers. He goes, he goes, I bet Flair has did it with that Judd bitch. All right, put bitch. Biden 2024. Oh, this guy. We got a Biden supporter here. Cheers. My butt's been <laughs> We welcome everybody from all cultures and all sides. The right and the left and shit. You're welcome here. Gomer says those are the lyrics of a song. <laughs> I don't know, Gomer. I guess they are. If that's if those are lyrics to the song, <laughs> that's badass. <laughs> uh, but cheers, my butt's been wiped. That's a pretty funny comment, bro. Uh, thank you for coming back. I think it's like the second time I've seen this guy come back. <laughs> that's badass. Um, also on the Ric Flair, like I said, the Ric Flair videos got us subscribers and it got us haters and it went viral. Mr. Rubix 77323 says, I'll take Ric Flair over a man with makeup any day. Well, duh. I mean, anyone would. Motherfucker, that's Ric Flair we're talking about and shit. Did you not see the video? I would love to be next to that man and say, he's with me. I'm with him. The, one, the guy who's, who's yelling and acting a scene drunk and saying, you dickhead. <laughs> I'm with that guy. <laughs> Cheers, Mr. Rubix. Thank you for commenting. Oh, next we got none other than the resident yellowest motherfucker on this channel. It's none other than Robo Igert. Oh, yeah. Konnichiwa. And Robo says. Hello, son of man, my brown skinned friend. Oh, hey, thanks for representing, motherfucker. I like it when you do that shit. Sorry, I've been absent. Life, you know how that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do catch up during the week, and thanks for all the laughs. I owe you a comment here on the channel since I am a woke pack member. So here it is. Oh, he left me a buck here, this fucking Asian son of a bitch. I think. 
I think me and my family once dined at the restaurant old Rick got kicked out of. LOL. Oh, <laughs> that's funny. This guy's from Florida. I forgot. I have a Paramount subscription, so I have watched Ark with my son. Oh, Ark the Animated Series is badass. He says it's awesome. Superman looks like shit, but it's James Gunn, so it's expected. <laughs> John Malkovich as Doom gives me goosebumps. That would be badass. Deadpool and Wolverine is Marvel's only hope. And Next Men 97 has been surprisingly good. Oh, I got the love the review for the last episode tonight. Cheers to the man and fuck the haters. Hashtag. Live. Oh, yeah. You fucking Asian son of a bitch. We love you. Hell. Thank you for commenting. Don't worry. You don't comment all the time, motherfucker. I know you got like 20 kids and shit. You go make that money so that oh, they can all do drugs. <laughs> and live at home. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, DMT says, I meant Ric Flair. And all he talked about was his son. It was sweet until I found out he died. Guy ruined my day. Shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> DMT, you son of a bitch. Shut the fuck up, bro. <laughs> oh, it's none other than the resident woman abuser slash rapist. <laughs> no, ma'am. Let me hit it for this misogynist. No, ma'am. National Organization of Men Against Amazonian Masterhood. Uh, no map says, Son, you remind me of this dude I knew back in high school. He puts a little laughing face. I love watching this channel. You're freaking dumb. Cheers. Hashtag. Live. Hey, you're dumb. You're racist. And you're rapist. I mean, you're rapist. You're not the racist. The racist the other motherfucker. Anyways, cheers, Nomad. Thank you for commenting, you dick. We love you. You hear that? That means there's no more beer in here. Let me get another one. We're drinking kind of fast, fellas. We're drinking kind of fast. You know what that means? It's going to be a good show. Hopefully we're almost done with the comments. This is getting long, man. Uh, all right, let's keep going. J Hart W on The Witcher sucks says, "Oh, oh, he's quoting me." Well, like, J Hart W, most of these motherfuckers put a timestamp if you're gonna quote me, you dick. Uh, but he 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 quoted me because he put it in quotation marks. On The Witcher Season 4, sucks. He says that I say, he looks faggy as fuck. And I mean that in a bad way. Yeah, 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 because we're taking that word back. In this channel, being a faggot and faggy means good. <laughs> That's the way it's going to be from now on, you fags. Cheers! All right, let's keep going. Thank you, JHardW, for uh, remembrance or whatever the fuck. Super Saiyan Joku. A Super Saiyan Joku. I don't know how to say 26 in Japanese. I'm not even going to try. Uh, he says on the on the podcast video, I went back and re-watching X-Men, and every time I hear the intro, I hear your sweet version of it. Oh, well, tonight's the last time you're going to hear it. It sounds amazing. I get excited and moist. Thanks, son of a man. Meow. Cheers, mother flowers. Hashtag. Live. Oh, cheers, Joko. You crazy son of a bitch. <laughs> we love you. All right. You left one more. Make sure it's the last one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the Ric Flair. He says, I really don't know why he leaves his mansion <laughs> in the first place. 
he most likely has a better bar and an Applebee's in the mansion. Yeah, I would. Fuck yeah, I would. No, I wouldn't have an Applebee's. I would have like, what are they called? The Twin, Pe Tw Twin Peaks. Oh yeah, with all the girls. They're all like, no one ever comes here. Shut the fuck up, bitch. You come here to work every day in that little skimpy outfit. <laughs> I need breakfast and lunch and dinner. <laughs> I would, I would, but he probably wants to show off. I would too. But come on, it's freaking Ric Flair. I would treat him right. Cheers, Ma Flowers. Ric Flair could do whatever he wants. He can woo and, and piss on the floor and fall over and helicopter all he wants all night long. As long as he fucking gives me some autographs and some pictures and signs some of my fucking uh, memorabilia, I'll be fine with it. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Sure, sure, per per. 2026 is how you say it. Ah, what? Yeah, this guy. Sure, sure, per per. 2026. Uh, oh, okay. You're talking about Super Saiyan Joku. Sure, sure, per per. <laughs> fucking DMT. Oh. All right, all right. Anyways, that's it for the comments. I do appreciate you motherfuckers for commenting and and thank you for everybody because we made it past 600 subscribers. <laughs> we did it, fellas. And with your help, we might make it to 700 in the next few months. Ah, so like, subscribe, and all that ass and shit. We're moving on. We're done. Thank you all. And ass and all that bullshit. Cheers. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road, you dicks. All right. And we're going to keep on going. Uh, with the weekly pop culture breakdown. And this week, something that I didn't know where to put it because it wasn't comic book nerd shit. It was nerd shit. But I felt that maybe this falls within the lines of the pop culture. Because it is part of the culture. But this week, <coughs> excuse me, Ubisoft announced and released a trailer for their brand new Assassin's Creed game. And they have gotten so much backlash from the gaming community and all the nerds and shit. And not because of the ridiculous pricing of the goddamn game. Because the regular game cost you $70. No longer a $59.99 fucking triple-a game like back in the day no longer a, a fucking fifth uh 69.99 now that it's a it's a fucking a 49.99 it's it's a fucking 70 dollar game now for the regular edition 109 dollars to include the season pass plus three early day pa passes season pass means the rest of the game that we're holding out for you because it's not a complete game. Fucking dicks. The Ultimate Edition includes the Ultimate Pack, which gives you all these extra suits that no one's going to have, all this loot and shit. Uh, and it also gives you an advantage because you get to uh, collect resources more than any other player, meaning the game, the way the game was actually meant to be played. So you got to play. If you want to play the game the way they actually made it for you to be enjoyed, Fully, it's $130. $130. Or you can subscribe to Xbox Ubisoft's Pass and get 100 PC games for $17.99 a month, which is what they're trying to trick you into. You dumbasses. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was happening. But no, the pricing is not why the fans and the geeks and the nerds are mad. They're mad because 
they have included two characters. An Asian shinobi assassin. And you're also going to play as a black samurai. A black samurai who is named Yasuki or Yasuke. Yasuke. Some shit like that. An African American man in feudal Japan in the 1500s. And this has upset the community. Now, Assassin's Creed is known for taking real life historical figures and writing fictitious stories to go along with their Assassin's and Templar's narrative. An example of that is one of my favorite games, Assassin's Creed Part 3, where they did the uh, uh, American Revolution and had characters like Charles Lee and uh, uh, I forget what this guy's name was, uh, uh, Kenway. Uh, and then they had uh, George Washington was in it, Ben Franklin. They had so many historical figures and they were all like, some of them were on the Freemason side, some of them were on the Templars, some of them were in the Assassins. So it was crazy how they were able to mix that in it. Yeah, Yukuse or Yusaki, Yusuke, Yusuke, apparently is a real person, a black man, according to history texts. I don't know all the details. I'm just going by what Twitter says, and Twitter might not be the most reliable source. Anyways, according to the Twitters, this guy was some sort of servant slash slave that was taken to Japan and stayed there for like maybe a year, a year and a half. And then he left to go be a slave somewhere or a servant somewhere else. I don't want to say the word slave. Maybe he was a servant. Some shit like that. So, there's been a battle on Wikipedia. Where originally it said that in 1597, Yusuke, Yusuke arrived in Japan. He was in the service of an Italian Jesuit missionary, which means he's a slave. Alessandro Vigilano. He visitor of the, the, the missions in the Indies in India. He'd been appointed a visitor, an inspector of the Jesuit mission, missions in Indies. Meaning he was kind of like a bus slave bodyguard. Look, you're a big black man. We're going to go to Japan. If anybody fucks with me, because I'm a priest, I want you to strangle them. That's why he went there. Uh, so, Vigilano's party spent the first two years in Japan, mainly in Kyushu. So that's where this man, a black man, was actually in Japan in the 1500s. Well, motherfuckers that are pissed off about this, and the game coming out, they decided to rewrite. You know, because in Wikipedia, you can edit the shit. And they put, It is important to note that there are no historical writings or evidence that Yusuke was considered a samurai. He was never giving a fief or a reference to one in many writings. Most of your knowledge of life comes from these messages written by missionaries and locals. <laughs> so, right now, there's been a battle between the Wikipedia moderators and the motherfuckers that are upset about this game changing stuff on Wikipedia back and forth. And this has been going on for the past fucking couple of days. Uh, it's people are upset about this here in America. Trolling has already started on Twitter. I'm sorry, it's officially x.com. Trolling has started. This guy posted an image of a black samurai, a woman, sexy as fuck. I gotta say, by the way, maybe Asian. She's a little bit Asian right there. They use AI, AI, give me a black Asian woman, sexy. They made it, and he puts. As Cassin's Creed Shadow Part 2 in the search of father. This fucking guy. More trolling on the on, on X. Some guy says that Wikipedia is going to change Dragon Ball's uh Goku's origin and then design that Goku was originally a black man. <laughs> Some other guy put Assassin's Creed's next game is gonna be called Savannah. In Africa, and it's gonna be a Caucasian man 
that was born there. <laughs> oh my god. No more trolling. Um, this guy made a little comic book. And he puts in the fucking comic book. Um, no. It's somebody got, somebody's been assassinated. And a little girl who could have done this. And the fucking, the guy goes, search for anyone who do, who's out of the ordinary. And then the, the black guy's like, oh shit. And he's just whistling like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Another guy went as far as making an AI image of this Asian lady, a black kid and a black samurai. And he says, oh, here he is. The proof. Yusuke. He, he was the guy who invented uh cameras and he took the first picture in japan and proof that he's a samurai <laughs> i was like i was like doesn't it look like the rizza <laughs> from wu-tang clang and shit <laughs> oh my god look obviously these uh, kids are upset because there's a black guy in a, a finally Assassin's Creed game in Japan. I want to say you're a little too late. You're about four years too late. Ghost of Tsushima was basically Assassin's Creed Japan. I don't know if you ever played Ghost of Tsushima. It had all the same mechanics as Assassin's Creed. It had better mechanics because you had to switch between four fucking styles of fighting depending on your enemy. One and every fighting had a different stance that he would do, and you could switch on it with the with the bumpers. It was badass. But if you wanted to, you could play it exactly like Assassin's Creed, which was the way I played it. And I snuck around the whole time and assassinated people. I never got into combat situations unless the game forced me to. I was just sneaking around the whole time. Going from behind and stabbing people. And then and, and I was like, this is Assassin's Creed in Japan. It's badass. Ghost of Tsushima is a good game. Now. The first. And I agree. I, I, I'm kind of on board with these motherfuckers that are mad. The first Japanese game for Assassin's Creed. And you insert i guess maybe historically there was some kind of black guy over there hanging out for a couple months you know a slave or whatever you want to call him retainer like gomer was saying whatever but this is supposed to be a japanese fucking game like shit when you did the egypt you kept it all egypt the only thing that was there was the ptolemies the fucking uh you know uh cleopatra and uh and and and, and, her, and her brother i forgot what his name was Ptolemy or whatever. Those motherfuckers were obviously Greek, so they were they were, they had a little bit of features, but they were still brown. Um, and then you had the the Vikings, and they were all Vikings. You had the one in France, they were all France. You had the one in Americas, and you had the Native Americans and the Europeans coming. But it's like, why are you like? I understand why people are pissed. I I really do. Like why? It, and, and and you know what? The third troll had the best one when he draws the drawing, the little uh, the little cartoon here. He's like, it doesn't make sense in the context of the game. You're assassinating people. Oh, and you're supposed to blame blend into your surroundings so they don't know who who assassinated. Oh, who did it? Oh, the was the seven foot tall Shaquille Neal over there. That's who did it. God damn it. He's the only one here who doesn't look like any of us. It makes no fucking sense. Yeah, yeah, Gomer Kyle says you had Tom Cruise in The Last Samurai, which I personally didn't like. Fuck that movie. I'll just tell you like that. Uh, and fuck Tom Cruise for thinking he was going to be cool for going to that shit. The only cool one that I'll give it to is Keanu Reeves when he did that last Ronin or 47 Ronin or ass. It was the bird people. That shit was crazy. That shit was cool. Anyways, the question arises out of all this controversy. What do the actual Japanese, how do they feel about this fucking game and trailer? Forget the Americans because we hate everything, okay? We hate the right, the left. We fucking talk shit left and right. Everything's a controversy in our lives. God damn it, we can't wake up without taking a shit and saying that shit doesn't look right. That's America. But how do the Japanese feel about this? Well, here it is. YouTube Japan. 
2,600 likes versus 24,000 dislikes from Japan. Ubisoft, Japones. Here are their comments translated by Google uh, Translate or whatever it's called. Zinyo says, up until now, and this is translated by Google from Japanese, because, you know, they write in squiggly lines and little fucking dots and shit that I don't understand. Up until now, the main characters have been the original local races. And, oh, and by the way, these are by real Japanese people, so they're a lot smarter than us, so they're going to sound like real nerds. Up until now, the main characters have been the original local races and ethnic groups. But why do they become different races when it comes to Japan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, they're not happy with it either. You give us our game, finally, and you put a black guy. And the most racist thing everybody knows, the Japanese are really, really racist towards blacks. Because they hate seeing the poor and where black men are, are fucking the shit. Destroying their women. They hate that. And so... They're really racist towards blacks. There's no lie. Look it up. It's a fact. And by putting a black guy in a Japanese game is pissing them the fuck off. This guy over here on 129, I'm not going to click on it, but he says, Yesuke, who is supposed to be a sword holder, enters the battlefield without permission. So, Nubasanga Sama ends up holding a sword himself, which is ridiculous. All right, look. I didn't know what this nerd was talking about, so I had to do a little bit of research. But apparently, something about a, if he was a samurai, then he has a master, and then the, he holds the sword and gives it to the master, and he has to ask for permission before he goes into battle or some ass. So that's what this guy's saying. None of this makes sense in our culture, he's saying. Tachikinda Peda, or whatever the fuck this Japanese guy says. This probably won't sell well in Japan. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to sell here in America, neither. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, XPZG or whatever. Everyone has a simple question. Why did they use black people in Japanese culture? We don't like black people. That's what, I mean, it's shit. I mean, they're being pretty racist here, but that's them. This guy, Tokoma-sama, mama or whatever. You should change your concept now. This is wrong in both Assassin's Creed and Japanese history. They didn't teach us this in school, you dicks, is what that guy is saying. Here's another guy who edited his comment, user, whatever. It may have existed in real life, but when the foreigner like disappears in historical dramas, it seems like a gag. The sense of discomfort is like seeing a Japanese person appear at the Boston Tea Party. Oh, yeah! <laughs> This guy burnt them gotcha, you fucking chink, you motherfucker. Ah, yeah, that's badass. This old motherfucker goes on and says, Why did they go out of their way to use black people? Don't they understand we hate them? Even though it's cha it's set in Japan. If they wanted to use a black person, they could have changed the setting. But it's too mysterious. Oh, yeah, like luck. When it comes down to it. The people that apparently you were aiming the game towards, they don't like it. The Westerners don't like it. No one seems to be liking this. Uh, this is a failure to their franchise. Did the same thing they did. I don't know if you remember this game called, uh, what was it called? It was like GTA, but it was called like, um, God damn it. St. Rose, St. Rose, they did, a, they tried to revamp St. Rose, and they did it super woke, where there was all these lesbians with those haircuts, like half of the shave to the head and shit, and purple and pink hair, no one bought that game, no one, and it looked good, the visuals, you know, it looked good, but no one bought that game, because they're all like, what did you do, like, you think we liked it, just because, just because, there's like, a few thousand of these fat, pink-haired motherfuckers who are playing video games doesn't mean they're the majority of the motherfuckers that have been giving you the money the past 40 years, you idiots.
That's us! And we don't want to play games like that, you dumbass. That's all I'm going to say. No one's going to buy this. I'm not going to buy it, mostly because I don't have a PS5. <laughs> but this is going to be a failure. That's all I'm going to say. They fucked up. Cheers. <laughs> and the internet's not staying quiet about it. Anyways. <laughs> this is election year. And we are going to get into it this year, fellas. So I want to cover a little bit. Keep you up to date. But apparently, the orange racist, misogynist, rapist himself. He went to the Delaware beat. No, not Delaware. He went to the Jersey Shore. And he completely shut down the place. Everyone showed up with their reds and blues and whites. Their magas. Let's make America great again, again, for a second time, they were saying. And support was off the charts. We had Native Americans, whites, winos, sluts, uh, OnlyFans models, all sorts of motherfuckers. Mexicans, blacks, well, not blacks, not in the Jersey Shore, but, you know, there were a lot of motherfuckers there. Hello, motherfuckers. And everybody was in full swing and supporting. They shut the beach down. They shut it down. And Trump was all like, I'm, I'm, my Trump is not good, all right? But Trump was all like, hey, I was just here to get some sun and the good orange tan, but okay. And he gave his speeches and he got everyone all riled up and they almost went to the fucking White House and did another January 6th. But Trump stopped them. He controlled the crowd. With his voice. Meanwhile, our current president, Mr. Brandon, aka Joe Biden, went to the beach himself in Delaware. Um, and that is not Joe Biden, that is his uh, caregiver. If you're a Mexican, that's called Palomita. He's that's his little Palomita. Little, little, changing his diapers there. She got a diaper bag next to him. Uh, so yeah, he, he went. He wore little shorts. You see his little anemic fucking legs and shit. All the blue veins from his lizard, from his lizard, cold blooded fucking veins flowing through him. And he's there trying to figure out how to work his new iPhone 15. Uh, cause he doesn't understand where the keyboard is. Uh, his caregiver is just ignoring him and shit. Uh, but. It's kind of sad, y'all, because nobody recognized him. Everybody just thought just some old man just there with his wife and shit, and, you know. But word started getting around that Trump was over there in New Jersey, and people were fucking going ecstatic. People were like, eh, Trump is in New Jersey, in Jersey, the beach, this beach is boring, it smells bad, it smells like fucking old, old diapers or something. And everybody started leaving. Yeah, everybody, people caught Greyhound buses, they got in airplanes, the motherfuckers were hitchhiking, they got the fuck out of there and they took their asses to the East Coast, I don't know where Delaware is, but they went all the way over there to the fucking Jersey Shore and shit. And eventually... Poor Mr. Biden was left all alone in a Delaware beach with his caregiver. <laughs> it's okay, fellas. He was asleep. He took a nice nap. Then they came and picked him up before the tide rose. And they took him back to the White House. It was too much commotion for one day. All right, too much commotion for the old man. He had to go back to work the next day, so... It was about 4.30 in the afternoon where they called it a night or, or, or a night for him. They said, that's it. Take it in, Grandpa. We're done. We're done. That's too much excitement for one day. <laughs> There's going to be some debates coming up, fellas. Uh, in June, next month, the first debate is happening in June. I don't know why so early. These motherfuckers are eager to get right into it. Trump coming straight up his rapist trial and shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna do a fucking debate. That's gonna be good. We're gonna have the full coverage right here. All the quotes and shit. Keeping you up to date. All the latest 
on election 2024. Cheers! But since we are talking about Trump and raping, <laughs> Stormy Daniels, husband, current husband, um, what's this fucker's name? I forget what his name, Rads, Mats, or Long Dick Max, or something like that, or, or your Heart Dick Cox, I don't know what his name is, Mats Max, or something, Cock Max, something like that. But this motherfucker was on CNN, and, or Fox News, or whatever, they were in TV News, I don't know, someone on the channel were interviewing him, and he was saying that if Trump wins, and he doesn't go to jail and he gets acquitted in the trial that him and his whore of a wife will probably have to leave the country and live somewhere else oh yeah that's probably because everywhere you go people are going to recognize you and be like hey didn't the president fuck your wife <laughs> cheers <laughs> I mean, a bunch of other fucking guys have fucked your wife. I will give her props, though, because this fucking slut always make them wear condoms. That's why I don't watch her porn, because it pisses me off when I see a dick in a con with a condom going in a pussy. That's some bullshit. If you ain't gonna take the risk of getting AIDS and dying, why are you even doing it in the first place, you pussies? You call it porn. You fucking pussy wearing a condom. Anyways. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So apparently... When Donald Trump wins, these two will no longer be American citizens, along with a bunch of other celebrities that bluff every year, <laughs> every four years about it. Oh, if this guy wins, I'm leaving the country. <laughs> Fuck you, you son of a bitch. Fucking come December, you're still going to be there fucking getting AIDS from this whore while you're watching her get fucked by four black guys and shit. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> All right, we're moving on. Keenan Thompson was said to have touched Amanda Bynes. That's fucking badass. Are you talking about Keenan Thompson, right? DMT. <laughs> Keenan Thompson, I'm telling you, I could go down the rabbit hole for a week on that son of a bitch. He's involved in a lot of stuff. He's probably involved in the Diddy stuff too. Just don't have the I don't have the evidence, but I know he is. Anyways, this week, fellas, Steve Buscemi got attacked by one of these fucking guys walking down the street, just got knocked the fuck out. It was a mistake. All right. They, if this was actually an Asian hate crime because they mistake, they mistook him for an old Asian man. Because that's what these guys are doing nowadays. They walk up to old Asian ladies or old Asian men and they punch them in the face for no reason. That's what happened to Steve Buscemi. Um, we actually have an image of the perpetrator. Anybody out there in the Bronx, New York area, if you see this really large uh, seven foot five ripped as fuck. A Goliath of a black man run away uh, call the authorities and run away damn if this is the guy who knocks T. Buscemi out <laughs> god damn it uh, I don't know what happened I don't know if uh, if if he was just like his grandson was telling him about you know this is like the new planking we're just walking up to Asian people and punching them. And he's like, ah, I want to feel young today. I'm going to do what these young kids are doing. And he saw Steve Buscemi and he was blinking. And he said, oh, look at that old fucking Asian man. And he punched him and shit. <laughs> Super Saiyan Joku's like, because he doesn't like black samurais. <laughs> Cheers, motherfucker. <laughs> Hey, he might not. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you know what upsets me about this situation? 
He says, see, see Buscemi's like half the, the size of this man. And, and probably more fragile too. This guy's in shape. They're probably the same age. <laughs> They're probably the same age. But this, this guy's like, physically, he's like half of his age. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but it kind of pisses me off because somebody should have told this old man he knocked out the wrong fucking white guy. Because the motherfucker that should have been knocked the fuck out is this piece of shit right here. Harvey Weinstein coming out of the jail with his little walker and shit. A little tennis ball, a little rolling on his tennis balls and shit. You see that fat son of a bitch? You knock him the fuck out and concuss him. Concuss him before he hits the ground. So when he hits the ground, he gets concussed a second time. All right. Uh, anyways, if you see this black man, call the authorities and run away. That's basically what I was trying to get to. But yeah, there he goes. That's the guy who beat up Steve Buscemi, everybody. Cheers, motherfuckers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Alright, we're gonna end it. Unfortunately, no Yeezy. He's been keeping it clean on the down low. His wife has been staying at home, getting fucked by who knows what. He's getting rid of his porno shit. He's going to get a porn company going, so they got to stay at home and record a lot. They can't porn outside. The only porn they can done outside has already been done. So no yeezy. But I do have some nitty gritty ditty because of video that... CNN showed a Puff Daddy coming out of a hotel room naked in a little towel and then beating the shit out of Cassie. <laughs> oh my God, bro. He's like, you whore. You're trying to take these expensive clothes I gave you? This is my money. Get back over here. You're going to get fucked by all my friends, bitch. <laughs> he runs back with all the clothes and jewelry he puts it back in the room and he comes out and he he throws her in the corner and then he starts throwing stuff at her <laughs> why he sits there at the chair oh my god dude this guy's going to jail for a long time <laughs> this is this is better than the jonathan majors video <laughs> look at this guy he punt kicked her this fucking guy, dude. <laughs> and she's probably all high and drunk and shit. <laughs> oh my god, bro. And I was wondering, is like, he's probably screaming, making all this. She's she's yelling for her for her life. Look, as he sits there and he throws shit <laughs> while she's cowering in the corner. Um, <laughs> and I was like, how come nobody comes out of the rooms? This motherfucker has enough money. He rented the whole floor so he can do his all his screaming and yelling and his uh, uh, and no one could hear them. So he rented the whole floor and no one heard this. <laughs> Luckily, we have surveillance. <laughs> we have surveillance footage of the truth, motherfucker. Oh, as soon as he hits the penitentiary, if he doesn't join a gang right away. Oh, he's going to get gangbanged <laughs> by a lot of people. <laughs> uh, and he's not going to enjoy it either. Oh, my God. He did. I'm telling you, he probably did rent it the whole floor. That chick is screaming. Ah, oh, and, he, and he's yelling, too. You whore, go back in here, you slut. Come here. He's yelling. I paid for you. I own you, you whore. Trying to walk out with your Gucci clothes and your Gucci underwear. That's my underwear, bitch. I wear that on Tuesdays. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, that's all I'm going to say is this, man. You really do reap what you sow. If you're this kind of person and you think you can keep going like this. Nah, -uh, my friend. You're just building up karma. And the more karma you build, the harder it's going to fall on you. This guy, this this exposure, this they're finally exposing him for what he is. This is only the beginning of his troubles. He hasn't gotten it. He hasn't gotten it yet, fellas. 
This is the beginning of his woes. And his children, unfortunately, are going to get dragged down, dragged down into it. Ah, oh, well, it's sad. It's sad because there was a lot, a lot of good music in the 90s. A lot of good music. I'm not going to lie. All right. Can't nobody take my pride. Can't nobody hold me down. Oh, no. I got to keep on moving. Oh, yeah. Bad, 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 bad boy. You make me feel so good. You make me, make me feel so good. You made me, made me feel so good. That's what we do. Oh, Puffy wrote that because he's talking about boys. Oh, yeah. Ha <laughs> ha, uh, What goes around comes around, motherfuckers. You better start praying to Jesus and living the right way or else you're going to get what you deserve. That's what happens in life. And that's what's happening to Diddy. Cheers, everybody. All right, we're done with this ass. Get another beer here. And I'm getting a big one here. Because we're about to get into your weekly comic book nerd shit. Oh, yeah. Comic book nerd shit. Oh, yeah. And uh, we're going to start with some behind the scene images of The Last of Us Season 2. And we finally have what we think is our first look at Ellie and Dina. Oh, yeah. Lesbianism. <laughs> We think this is what's going on. I, we think that this is Dina, our first look. And it's Isabella Merced, the hot girl, who was also in uh, Madam Web, that was a failure. And she's going to be James Gunn's hot girl in Superman. And now she's going to be this lesbian making out with this little girl and shit. She's hot as fuck. She's way hotter than the character. You know, it's weird because in the game... Ellie's hot, and Dina is kind of fucking weird looking. And in the series, Ellie's weird looking, and Dina's fucking hot. So, you know, they kind of switched the roles around, fellas. Yeah! Cheers! Lesbianisms. Young lesbianisms on screen, too. That's some crazy shit. <clears throat> They're gonna get into... Abby Smash, we already know that little girl is going to be playing her, and she's not big at all, or buff, or butch looking. She's really dainty and cute, so it's going to be weird when when Abby Smash comes out, because it's going to be like, oh, I'm hot as fuck and skinny, and I'm going to beat your ass, and it's going to be like, that's not the way the game is, you dumbasses. Uh, so who knows, man? It's curious. Uh, you know, because they're trying, they're trying to add some hotness into it. This shit, obviously, with this little Isabella said in it. Uh, but yeah, they're filming this Last of Us season two. It's on the way, motherfuckers. If you haven't seen the season one, go watch it. It's pretty good. I I liked it. I liked it a lot. Maybe one episode, maybe I could have done it without, but it's all right as a series as a whole. It was pretty faithful. They added some new context and a little bit extra Easter eggs. It was good. It was good. Uh, we'll see what season two ends up because, you know, Joel, Joel, because it is Pedro Pascal. Joel is probably going to die within the first two episodes, just so you know. Abby Smash going to beat his ass with a bat over and over until he's dead. Let it be known right here. Spoilers. Cheers. Anyways. Let's move on to more ass. And it's none other than DC James Gunn ass. Because Chris Pratt was asked in an interview 
Hey! Well, I mean, you're gonna come back as Star-Lord, right? And he said, well, you know, like, Marvel doesn't tell us. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't make sense that Star-Lord would be retired. Maybe he went back to Earth for a little bit to be with his grandpa, but they're gonna need him. And at the end of the movie, it did say Star-Lord will return. So I'm pretty sure I still have a job in the MCU, he says. That's what he said. Get some weed here. They asked him, well, your pal, best friend in the world, James Gunn, is over there in the DC making Superman and making a new franchise. He's going to bring back and resurrect Warner Brothers in DC. Are you going to work over there with him? There's a possibility. And he said, well, you know, like, you know, like, I mean, you know, like, and he said, he didn't know what to say. And then all of a sudden he says, you know what? Yes, 100%. I will do both. Sure. Uh, he hasn't called me, but the answer is yes. If he calls me, I will do both. I will do Marvel and DC movies because I need paychecks for my white children, my hot wife, who's a Schwarzenegger and a Nazi. I need the money. Um, so yeah, confirmation stamped. Chris Pratt, multiversal MCU, DCU actor. He's into both, officially, according to him and James Gunn, and the failure of the universe that's never going to take off as soon as Superman fucking premieres. It's going to fail, and they're going to just cancel all the movies. But they're excited because they're going to have some kind of DC uh, collaboration. I think it's obvious. Everybody knows. And I think it's confirmed because of this new posting, y'all. From the the Film and Arts Television and Association of Alliance of fucking woke as fuck actors has put out this series development and production date to start on July 8th of this year in Los Angeles, California. And the project summary is Booster Gold is a superhero appearing in American comic books published by DC. Created by Dan Jurgens, the character appeared in Booster Gold number one and is a member of the Justice League. The show will start production this summer. And what do you know? Chris Pratt isn't doing anything right now. Oh, yeah. I think it's obvious Booster Gold is going to be Chris Pratt. There is no one else. There is no one else who can be that stupid than Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt already plays a dumbass. You got Booster Gold is a dumbass from the future with a bunch of gadgets. And, oh, look, he can fly. Well, yeah, because I have anti-gravity ass from the future that everybody has. But when I come to the past, nobody's ever seen it. I'm a superhero. And that's what this dumbass is going to be. It's basically what it is. Inspector Gadget from the future. And shit. Ah, it's happening, fellas. Chris Pratt, Star Lord, Booster Gold, DC series, probably gonna be on Max. Some ass coming to you sometime in 2025 because they're filming it this July. And shit. But just so you know, there is a current rumor that what might be included because James Gunn's brain has concluded. That he wants to team up Ble Blue Bleedle with Booster Gold. So, Solo Madrigueña is going to somehow be incorporated in the Booster Gold series. So that they could be a team in this new Superman DCU fucking James Gunn universe. So we're going to see this. Here we are. Ah, let me smoke a bow for this ass. No comments. Until I see some ass on screen. It's still ass. But I'm not going to say. I don't. I'm not hopeful for any of this. Fuck you, James Gunn. You're predictable. You're so fucking predictable. We know it's gonna fail. You dumbass.
Anyways. Let's move on to what you all are actually here for tonight. And that's the real failure of the night. And that is none other than the Marvel shit. But we're going to start with the Marvel slash Sony shit first. And Sony is moving forward with a live action Spider-Man Noir series. And they do want Nicolas Cage, who already voices the character in the Spider-Man animated Spider-Verse movies. They want him to play the live action version of Spider-Man Noir. I think he's perfect. He's perfect. The problem lies within Sony and their direction of fucking projects. Because Spider-Man Noir is literally like Dick Tracy in the 1930s and shit. Noir. Shit. The difference is that he gets his powers from a demon spider who encounters and bites him and shit. It's weird. Like some kind of ghost or demon or interdimensional shit that he encounters in the alley. And then the thing bites him and tells him, I'm giving you these powers and you better not be a dumbass. Power responsibility or some shit. So he becomes this crime fighting noir fucking Spider-Man. Nicolas Cage is perfect for this craziness. I think he's too old. He's going bald and ass. But then again, Spider-Man Noir has never really been unmasked, so we don't know what he looks like underneath, so he could be an old man. Noir. My biggest gripe is going to be, like, if they don't keep this in the style of Noir, meaning I actually want this show in fucking, if not black and white, at the very least gray, brown tones, like what I'm showing you here. The whole show, all the characters better look grainy and shit like this. That's my fucking hopes for this. If Sony wants to succeed for the first time in their miserable existence, then they better try to adapt something faithfully for once. Instead of doing their bullshit like they've done with Madam Web and Venom and Craven the Hunters and ass. That's all I'm gonna say. Cheers to Nicolas Cage! Who doesn't give a fuck what people think of him. And he just does everything for the money. Cheers, Nicolas Cage. You can do any bad movie in the world as long as you get paid. That's all that matters. Cheers. He's like the Little Wayne of fucking movies. Because Little Wayne would feature in every fucking everybody song. Everybody, give me some money, I'll feature. And they feature in everybody's shitty song. He featured in it. He made the songs better. But he featured in the shitty songs. That's what Nicolas Cage does. Cheers. <sighs> all right. Let's get into some serious news that's going to affect all of us, fellas. But big ass, can we get some toast is in trouble. <sighs> Kevin Feige and Marvel and Disney sent their lawyers and they send out one of these papers to IG and Instagram and they said, you better give us the identity or the IP addresses or whatever information, the email addresses, whatever phone numbers, anything you have about this fucking, can we get some toast? They, them, non-binary sons of bitches because we are tired, tired of hearing Fucking the underground broadcast and the son of man spewing all of these leaks and spoilers before the movie comes out. We're tired of these motherfuckers and we don't want them to get famous because he's brown, wears makeup, and looks like a woman. You're racist. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now they have handed Instagram an affidavit. Give up the identity of the leaker. Or else, our lawyers are going to fucking sue Instagram for, for provi providing sanctuary to this criminal who is leaking all our secrets. And this is one of the two leakers. Right? There's two leakers we use on this channel, just so everyone knows. 
It is can we get some toes, but we also get fucking uh, uh, my time to shine. They're both they thems, non binaries, big ass, big tits, uh, BB dubs. That's how we like them. Oh, yeah. Anyways, can we get some toast? He's in trouble with Feige. He's had enough of the leaks. And all I'm going to say is, I want you all to pray tonight that nothing comes out of this. Because if Feige stops they, them, then this channel dies. Because we won't have any spoilers for y'all. And every spoiler they've ever said is true. I mean, I try to feel like these motherfuckers have to work there or their husbands or, or mothers or somebody that they live with literally works there at Marvel and Disney. And not only that, but works in every project because everything they always say is true. Everything. So they have to, they have to work in every they have to be way up there and, or know somebody who's way up there and oversees all the projects because they know so much information about every project. It's not just one or two, you know, it would be condensed and you could be, oh, well, this is the motherfuckers who's in charge. He knows, but they know of everything that goes on in the studio. So either they actually work there and are super high up, these leakers, these two leakers, or they're married or fucking someone who is super high up there um and fuck he's done with it he's done he says we're producing shit and ass and i'm tired of people knowing we're producing shit and ass and then they don't go to the theaters to watch it and we don't get no money i'm tired of it that's what we're, we're all about we want to tell you if the movie sucks ass before it comes out so you don't spend your money in Biden's hard economy. Because it's tough working right now. That's what we're all about. We're trying to help the community here, man. That's what we're all about. That's what spoilers is about, to save you some money. If you hear the spoilers and they sound amazing, then you should pay and go watch the movie and support it. But if it's ass, like everything we've been showing you and spoiling, then fuck them. Don't go see them. I think Feige and Marvel and Disney are just mad because can we get some toes and my time to shine? They're making money off of the spoilers, you know, because they get all of these, these dumb asses, these heavy spoilers, these fucking new rock stars, these Kevin Smiths, these son of mans. They get all these dumb asses to pay them $3.99 a month for spoilers. Yeah, motherfuckers. I pay these motherfuckers $3 a month and I get spoilers for y'all. Dicks. So that way you don't have to spend your money. Dumbass. Oh, I don't know. This is crazy. That they're demanding Instagram to hand this person over. I don't know. This is a, a newly developing story. We're going to find out pretty soon what's going to happen. We don't know about uh, my time to shine, but can we get some toast? Uh, is in a lot of trouble, apparently. I mean, this is like, if they find out who you are, big ass bitch. You're gonna, you're gonna fucking be in a lot of trouble because they could, like, demand all the money they've lost from all the mo failures of movies they've had the past four years. They could be like, it's your fault because... You you told them all the movie sucked ass before they paid for it. Yeah. You you're going to have to give them all the billions of dollars they've lost or you're going to you're you're taking your big ass to jail. Yeah. Developing story. We'll see how this turns out, fellas. But it sounds crazy and it doesn't sound good at all. Anyways, None of rumor this week coming from the other, the other big ass or the other big titties. My time to shine is that there is currently a Nova series that is being fast tracked for a Disney Plus. They don't know if it's actually a series or if it's going to be a one off. The way the werewolf movie was, where it was a presentation. 
This just might be a one hour movie or some short movie. It should. But according to this ass, this is going to be featuring both Richard Ryder, the original adult first Nova from the, the created the Nova Corps, and his protege Sam Alexander, the kid Nova that he passes the mantle on to. Ah, this is going to be ass. Ah. I don't know why Noah wasn't introduced from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Period. You had the Nova Corps. You couldn't have had, this is the guy we based it on, some hero and shit. No, no. No one knows Nova. Fuck you. Here we are. We're going to see some kind of Disney Plus six episode, 30 minute episode series, or even worse, a one hour special where we see Nova coming out of no explanation, having powers to suit the Nova Corpse and ass. Here he is training a little boy to take over him and then probably dying at the end so that the kid could become the new Nova Moving on in the MCU so he could be part of the new Young Avengers and all this ass. <sighs> you know, I don't even know why I do this show sometimes. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not cheering. I'm drinking to forget because that's all I do nowadays when I talk about Marvel and Disney. I get drunk to kill my brain cells. <sighs> Fuck you, Feige. They had some kind of Disney 23 or some presentation for comic cons. I don't know. All these privileged nerds ask their parents for money. And they paid $600, $700 tickets and paid $1,500 fucking uh, suites to spend two days at Disney Orlando, Universal Epcot Studios or whatever. And ass. They paid fucking $40, $50 per, per meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And shit. They probably got COVID from being around all these people and dirty kids and shit. But anyways, they got to go to some presentation. And they showed them all this shit, Star Wars and all this ass we're not going to talk about because it's fucking bullshit and I don't give a fuck about any of it. We're sticking to the Marvel shit right here. But they did show them a trailer for Daredevil Born Again. With a brand new logo that looks like it's bleeding because they want to show that there's blood involved in this. And it's serious and mature and rated R. And we need you to please subscribe and watch this on Disney+. Plus. They're saying. That's what they're saying. Um, And they had uh, a trailer and the descriptions. Uh, they're not clear descriptions. But so the Jitsavis are saying that, oh, it's bloody and it looks serious and, and, and gritty and it looks like Netflix. The fuck up. So did Echo when they showed the trailer. And then we saw the show. And we saw how watered down and sh poorly, very poorly edited and cut it was. So we'll see what this 19 episode show that was already shot and finished. And then Kevin Feige says, everyone's fired after watching it, chopped it all up, and said, we're doing reshoots. And they reshot a total of, from 18, they reshot a total of nine episodes. Cut and pasted together some of the old footage. And we'll see what we get. Instead of 18, we're getting nine episodes. But to get everyone excited from all this ass, 
They did bring out the stars. As you see down there in the little image, they brought down Charlie Cox and Vicente de Onofrio, Wilson Fisk. And god damn it, man. Does Vicente, is Vicente Onofrio dying of rectal cancer? I mean, this is beyond. Let me get fit. Motherfucker, you're playing the kingpin. You're playing Wilson Fisk. One of the biggest, thickest characters in the universe. Look at this fucking guy looking like he's 25. Fuck you. This is the worst decision Marvel has ever made. To just let him be healthy and eat right and get in and and then not be on the brink of being diabetic. Motherfucker, that is not what the character is. I don't want to see this show because I'm scared. If that's how he's gonna look. I mean, the way he looked in that show, the Hawkeye show, he was big back then. He was still, I was complaining he was skinnier than he was in the fucking uh, Daredevil show. He slimmed down from the Daredevil to the Hawkeye. He slimmed down, but he was still bigger. This is... <sighs> he's literally... He's taller, but he's literally the same built as Charlie Cox Daredevil. You can superimpose them both together and they're the same built. Are you trying to tell me that the Wilson Fisk from now on in the MCU is as fit as Daredevil? Fuck you, Kevin Feige. And fuck you, Onofrio, thinking this is a good idea. Oh, I don't want to die of diabetes. Fuck you. You want to die of diabetes as one of the best actors, character portrayers ever. They do it. Dumbass. Tom Hanks did it. Why can't you? Son of a bitch trying to be fit and healthy. Oh, I'm fucking angry and distraught about this. I'm not even lying. And I respect Onofrio a lot because I lie. He, to me, is like a Bill Paxton. May he rest in peace. We miss you. Bill Paxton, they're great character actors that every character they play, they get lost and they com completely change into a different person. The voice, everything, the mannerisms. They're character actors, just like Johnny Depp. I, I, I respect Johnny Depp for that because Johnny Depp is that kind of guy. And, uh, and, and, and this is... But this is ass. You're not portraying the fucking character they hired you to portray, you son of a bitch, because it's a true actor. If Jared Leto was given the role of Wilson Fisk, Jared Leto will gain the 300 pounds to be Wilson Fisk. Fuck you. That's all I'm going to say. I'm done. because I, I don't want to insult this man because I respect him too much, but at the same time, he's letting me down. I'm not lying. He's letting me down. God damn it. Marvel finally came out in this stupid presentation and they showed finally some ass where they said it was Agatha all along and all these names that we've been showing you the past couple of months are actually titles of the episodes. Oh yeah, so you have six episodes. Oh yeah. The first one, of course, being... I get the Darkhold Diaries, and then House of Harkness, and then Coven of Chaos, and then Living Witch with Great Wardrobe, and then Agatha all along, which is what the show is called. Yeah, and we're going to have a two-episode premiere. Two-episode premiere. This is only six episodes, by the way. So th thank God we're not going to review this for that long. Two episode premiere starting the 18th of September. A show littered 
with lesbianisms, non-binaries, and transsexuals, and literally no Wanda Maximoff, and nothing that is going to connect to Kang or the multiversal saga that is currently supposedly playing out in the movies and the shows, even though nothing has connected with each other. So yeah, uh, here's another $240 million failure down the fucking drain from a studio that never learns from its own mistakes. I'm not gonna cheers. I'm drinking to forget and drinking because I'm depressed that they're ruining everything I grew up with and spent hundreds of my parents' dollars at the comic book store buying. All right. This week, it was announced by Marvel and Disney that none other than that druggy Natasha Lyonne has been cast in the Fantastic Four movie in a mysterious row. Probably gonna be nothing special. It's gonna be one of these, like, what is that chick with the big tits? Uh, with Darcy or whatever from the Thor? Uh, two broke girls. It's gonna be some shit like that. Some comic relief, some little bitch, some lesbian, red haired, and it says funny stuff. Oh, oh, she's cool. We got to have her in another movie, too, even though she doesn't have any superpowers or nothing. But she says funny stuff. That's all she's going to be. But she's good. I'll just tell you like that. You know where I remember this little girl from? And I don't know if you guys, uh, hopefully some of you guys are old enough. But this is, I remember her from, uh, it was called Detroit Rock City. She was this girl, the disco girl, these guys called Stella. Ah, when they picked her up because the the disco guys she got all mad because they beat her they beat him up and she she just walked started walking down the road and then they picked her up which is all like this is the way a porno starts and they picked her up and they get her high and shit when she passes out in their car <laughs> she's punky brewster super saiyan joku uh, I never watched Punky Brewster, but is she, is she Punky Brewster? Let me know if that's a real fact, or you're just talking some shit. Uh, I just want to know. Uh, but yeah, I remember her from Detroit Rock City. Detroit Rock City is a badass movie. Y'all should fucking watch that. It's a movie from the 70s. It's about Kiss. This guy's going to a fucking... Uh, oh, it looks like her, Punky Brewster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I never watched Punky Brewster. I know that that little girl, I think when I was a little boy, I saw a picture of her and I thought she was cute, but I didn't, I know nothing about that show or what even it was about. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think the Punky Brewster, she went on to be in Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I think her name was Soleil, Sumei, Lo, Lo Moon Fry, Moon Frey, Moon Fort. She was like some kind of French bitch. I think that's who Punky Brewster is. So lay moon fry moon fry. <laughs> she was hot on Sabrina Teenage Witch. She was way hotter. That's why she was a lot older and shit. I think that's what you're talking about. Anyways, yeah, I mean this could go left and right either way. It's not gonna be an important major character. It's just a fucking side character and shit. The comic relief. Yeah, they're getting good. They're getting a good cast for this movie. I'm not gonna lie. It's a good cast. It's a good cast. I smoke to this. Hmm. I'll cheers to this. Fuck it. Gomer says, I was a fry simp since Punky. Oh, yeah. I, don't, I never saw Punky Brewster, but I remember in Sabrina Teenage Witch, she was like a friend. She was their friend. And uh, and she was hot. And the ants, Sabrina's ants were hot as fuck. Those ladies, man. That's when I got my fetish for older ladies. Oh, yeah. Anyways. We're continuing with Fantastic Four fucking rumors, you fucking perverts. And guess what? They're now stating that Galactus is coming to Earth not to feed on Earth, but instead he's coming in search of Franklin Richards. 
Now it's still, this is my time to shine. She doesn't give away all the spoilers. She's just giving bits and pieces. And she says, Galactus is coming to Earth strictly for Franklin Richards. And she says, I'll give another spoiler. Franklin Richards will not be from Earth. He will have been born in space. Now, this is not going to be the Fantastic Four from the comic books. This is a Fantastic Four from another universe. And it's totally different. Where Iron Man and Spider-Man and none of the X-Men, none of the Avengers exist in their world. They only exist. So everything is going to be different. And not only that, but their world is going to be like modern. But what people in the 60s thought the world was. If you ever go back and you watch those cartoons or you watch pamphlets about what people in the 60s thought the future was going to be like. Oh, the shit from the future. And everything looked like the Jetsons or silver and shit. That's what their world's going to look like. It's going to look modernized. But it's going to look stylish the way people thought back then. It's kind of like Fallout. Because the way Fallout was, it was kind of like that. The way I understood it. So it's going to be a, a universe where it's going to be different. Where their world is going to be modernized. But the buildings are going to look retro futuristic. Like if people from the 60s designed the future. That's what it's going to look like. And then there, I, I think it's going to, because she doesn't give away all the spoilers. She just says Galactus is coming, all, not to feed on Earth. He's coming for Franklin Richards. And for whatever reason, Franklin Richards was not born from Earth. He was born in outer space. I'm thinking, and that's just me throwing it out there, because this is probably going to be brand new. They're going to say Franklin Richards is like Galactus's son or something like that. And maybe the Fantastic Four found the baby in space and they brought him back to Earth. And now Galactus is coming back for and they raised him as their own when he's really Galactus' son. And, I, and that's just an idea that came into my head because this is all new. None of this makes sense to me. But this is what Feige is going for. He's going for all new. He said, we've already heard the origin. We're, I have to give them something new. Feige said... I had to give you something you've never seen before with a Fantastic Four. He could be doing this. He would be 100% different. And this being fucking Galactus' son that the Fantastic Four found in space or something or a, a supernova happened that gave them their powers. I don't know, some explanation. And then what was left over from the supernova was his little baby. And they brought him back. And they raised him as their son. But now the real father is coming back for him. And it's Galactus. That would be fucking crazy. I don't think it's going to fly in a lot of the comic book community. But I'm just throwing ideas out there. Because, because we don't know. We just know the little bits. This leaker, which they're always right. The, these two leakers that I mentioned. They're always right. This leaker specifically leaked the entire Spider-Man No Way Home movie. Uh, my Time to Shine. The entire Spider-Man. Every spoiler we gave you from that movie and to the very end, a week before, and then you went and saw the movie and you saw that everything we said the whole year was right came from this person. This person is saying this. That's probably true. She probably knows all the details. But because she wants more money for you to subscribe, we gave her three dollars every month. If at least a thousand motherfuckers give her three dollars, she already got three thousand dollars for a month. For what? For for lie for for saying what her for her husband told her, or what she found out at work. I don't know who she is. Were they lesbians, non-binaries, whatever? Shit, some good money. I wish I worked there. I'd be spelling it all over the beans. Oh, yeah. Cheers, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on to more rumors coming from this fucking leakers. But apparently, Marvel Disney Plus is bringing in a blonde phantom series. 
Now, yes, I am just like you. That I'm like, what the fuck is a blonde phantom? God damn it. So I had to go research this ass. And this is some 1930s ass. When Marvel first started, they were throwing shit at the... There was some guy just before Stan Lee came in and Jack Kirby. There was a bunch of fucking dumbasses. A bunch of white Jewish sons of bitches. Oh, I'm sorry. A bunch of fucking Palestine... I, I cannot say the word, so I don't want to get in trouble. A bunch of Palestinian hating sons of bitches. We're fucking just throwing shit at a wall and coming up with ideas. Oh, I just hit a blonde. Oh, I just hit a phantom. All right, combine them. The blonde phantom. So, the blonde phantom, in a nutshell, because I had to go research what the fuck this it was, was basically the female Marvel Batman. Except she wasn't rich. Right? This is some lady, some hot blonde that worked at, like, the UN as a secretary or something for a senator. Like, she was important as far as, like, world relations where she was, like, you know, a secretary for a guy who was in the relations of the national whatever or, or the UN. You know, so she overheard all the stuff that was going on. And she didn't have any superpowers, but, but because she hangs out there and hears all these world leaders and all these plans, she decides she wants to be a strong woman and do something about it. And so then she picks up a fucking gun, a Glock 9-7 or whatever the fuck they call him in the hood. She picks one up and she puts on a Robin mask like from Batman. And she puts on a super sexy red outfit and she goes out and she's the blonde phantom. No superpowers. She just goes out with a gun and kicks some ass. Like Batman vigilante style. And she thwarts Nazis and Germans and Russians and Putin supporters. And any motherfuckers against the state of Israel. Uh, no, not me. Not me. That's just what the, the, the fucking comic book was about. Um, so yeah... Marvel Disney Plus is moving forward with a series about this. And I got to tell you one thing. This makes a lot of sense with a rumor that we said a few months ago. We said that Sydney Sweeney had joined the MCU in a secret role and that Marvel had talked to her, and I guessed all these things, but she seems perfect for the description of this character. Some little girl who's a scared secretary to, to some fucking secretary of the military who goes to the United Nations, and she overhears a plot to terrorist attack, and she says, I'm gonna handle this like a strong fucking big boobed sexy woman with a gun this is perfect i'm telling you this could be the very shot in the arm that marvel and disney need bad acting and big fucking boobs oh yeah Cheers! I think even if this ends up being shitty as fuck, everyone's going to watch it. It's going to be a success because of the viewership. This channel is going to review it and give it all tens, regardless of the acting. Because all you need is this. Look, I'm showing you the, the pictures. This is all you need. I mean, this little girl is perfect to be the blonde, mo the blonde phantom. She's ready for it. She is ready to be this character. It could be funny too. Look at this comic book. She's like, she's inside of her car and she's trying to change into her outfit. And she says, how does that guy manage it, manage it in a phone box. She's talking about Superman. How does Superman put on his costume so fast? I'm in a I'm in a limousine and I'm having a hard time putting this thong on. <laughs> this is great. 
And she doesn't have any powers, so she could be a klutz and a blonde. Just an idiot. This little girl's not a good actress. But that's exactly what they need. Just somebody being dumb and being like, oh, like Betty Boop and shit, but saving the day. Oh, yeah, this is fucking perfect. And I'm telling you, my guess is that Sydney Sweeney is not going to be no superhero, no X-Men, none of that shit we were guessing last time. Sydney Sweeney is going to be this fucking character, the blonde phantom for a Marvel Universe. My guess, putting it down right now. And actually, after we end this broadcast, I'm putting it real down. Oh, yeah. Cheers! <laughs> Sydney, sweetie, we love you. But let's get into it. What everybody's been waiting for. What Super Saiyan Joku has been waiting for. Here we go. X-Men 97 The season finale Here we go We left off with Magneto ripping the adamantium out of fucking Wolverine And we all said Onslaught is coming because that leads into it. So Xavier fucking takes over Magneto's head, completely takes over him, and uses his power to revert the Earth's gravitational pull and all that ass, reverse the EMP, bring back electricity, whatever. The world's not going to end. It's basically what Charles did. They're not doing onslaught. And if they are, it's going to be maybe season three or season four. And let me explain to you why. Because this didn't show nothing about Charles saying, I'm taking the bad side of Magneto and locking it away somewhere. It showed nothing like that. But. If they say, oh, it happened while well, this later on, eh, two seasons from, from now, they could say, oh, this actually happened during this process. Y'all didn't know. And here's what happened. And that's fine if that's what they do. Because in all reality, when in the comic books, when Magneto took the adamantium out of Wolverine and fucking Charles made him docile and turned him into Joseph. It was almost like three to four, maybe four years. It was two to four years before the Onslaught Saga began. So they waited a long time before they pulled the trigger and said, oh, all this time, this is what secretly has been happening. So we might still get Onslaught, but it's not happening anytime fucking soon. I'll just tell you like that. So, yes, Charles takes over Magneto Psyche and he reverts everything back. And then all of a sudden, cameos galore. Silver Samurai pops out and shit. Uh, Iron Man at the White House. Captain America with Senator Kennedy, President Kennedy. Daredevil, Doctor Strange. The Black Panther, but not T'Challa. T'Chaka. Or not T'Chaka. T'Chaka. Fucking Omega Red. I fucking, it, it's going too fast. There's so many fucking cameos come out in this whole fucking episode. It's ridiculous. And I can tell you that 100% the next story arc may be halfway in season two. If not until season three is Avengers versus X-Men. 
We'll get into more of what my theories are. But the reason why I say Avengers vs. X-Men is coming is because they're showing us all the players already. What's weird is that they showed King T'Chaka being the Black Panther and not T'Challa, which is not continuity. Because in the old shows, T'Chaka was not the Black Panther. Even in the old shows, it was T'Challa. So that's fucking weird that they're doing that here. And another thing that pisses me off, and they show Cloak and Dagger too. They show Cloak and Dagger. Omega Red, which is badass. I hope he comes out more. Psylocke with her ass. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm drinking to that. They showed her ass and fucking her thong and shit. That's badass. And they showed Puck there. From the X Factor, from the Canadian, or what? Not the X Factor, from the Canadian X Men, or whatever they're called. Uh, where North Star and the other guys were there, Sasquatch, but the fucking Puck was there. Um, but here's what bothers me: another error in continuity is that Peter Parker and Mary Jane are there, and it's like, first of all, Mary Jane got sucked into that wormhole with the Green Green Goblin, and so she never came back. We never saw a resolution to that. But number two is that the X-Men that featured in Spider-Man 1994 were not these X-Men. They weren't. You can go back and watch it. And they look similar, but they weren't the same X-Men. Number one, their suits are different. Number two, it's not the same team. People are missing. The main one that's missing is Jean Grey. And then they have some other little girl. Like, it's just, it's not continuity because it's a different X-Men team. That's all I'll say. If, if, if they wanted it to be the same, they would have drawn them the same and it would have been the same, but it's not. But that's not continuity. So, but now they're trying to make continuity. So it's like, whatever the fuck. I'll accept it because it was cool. I'm not going to lie. This was literally the best episode of the entire season. Uh, yeah. Cameos galore. Left and right. Probably showing us what's good, some of the characters that are going to come out in season two. And ass. Another big shit that happened was they showed the end of Sinister. Or what we presume is the end of Sinister. Which is crazy because I don't remember this from the comic books at all. But the Phoenix comes out of Jean Grey, which also makes no fucking sense. I, I gotta complain about some shit. The Phoenix comes out of Jean Grey, which makes no fucking sense because the Phoenix had already left Jean Grey's body and shit. <laughs> uh, but somehow it comes out again and manifests itself. And the Phoenix separates all the DNA that, that, that Sinister had experimented with and had used to create his current body. And she removes it from him and makes him be what he's supposed to look like, which is like 1,000 years old or some ass like that, hundreds of years old. And he's like this deformed looking alien, disgusting, fucking, I don't know, disgusting looking thing, this powder, fucking... Fucking guy, you know, Joe Biden looking motherfucker. And he runs away crying. I don't know why nobody killed him. If I was Cyclops, I would have just shot him with my beam. Choo! Boom, exploded his ass. That's it. No more. He can't come back. They let him run away. Like some kind of cripple. That's fucking stupid. So he might come back just because of that. Because they let him run away. But the main shit of the episode is Bastion. Bastion fully transforms more like what he looks in the comic books, but actually, I'm not gonna lie, they made him look more badass in this because they gave him wings and shit. He looks badass. He looks like Iron Man, like a bad Iron Man with wings like Archangel and shit. Um, everything, all the fighting and animation is amazing. Cyclops, Cyclops, he even does that move from the fucking con from from the game. Marvel vs. Capcom, where he throws a big beam and shit. And what ends up happening is, um... I'm being, I'm being fucking high and drunk here. But yeah, 
uh, the U.S. blows, uh, they kill Bastion, or did they almost stop him. They don't kill him. But what happens is the U.S. sends all these nuclear bombs to destroy the fucking asteroid, and all of them together, and they do. And Bastion gets, supposedly gets destroyed. Supposedly is what I say, you know, because you never know with this ass. Supposedly gets destroyed. And then the asteroid's going to crash into Earth and, and destroy Earth. So the humans fucked up because destroying the asteroid is going to make it crash into Earth and they're all going to die. The end of extinction. But Magneto wakes up from whatever trance fucking Xavier had him in. And he decides to take the asteroid back into space. And then as soon as Magneto saves the day and takes the asteroid back into space with all the X-Men and shit. And everyone celebrates. All of a sudden, they fucking disappear. The whole shit disappears. And here's where the shit kind of goes crazy. Because from what I see is the only people that were left on Earth, as you can see, is Jubilee, Sunspot, Forge, and this slut that betrayed Bastion. Everyone else got transported. Everyone. Bishop comes and he tells them they got transported to other times. And what we find out is that in the future, Cyclops and Gene are in the future. That we know of. We don't know if someone else is there with it. We don't know if Wolverine or Morph or Storm. We don't know where they're at. But they wake up in the future and they ran into Mother. Uh, what do they call her? Ascani is what she calls herself. But Mother Ascani in the future is Rachel Summers, their daughter. And she is the main reason. Let it be known. Why Avengers vs. X-Men even happens. It's Rachel Summers. So I'm telling you, this is maybe by... Because season 2 was already done. They're just animating it right now. It was recorded at the same time they finished season 1. They recorded the vocals for season 2. So they're animating season 2 right now. But it's done as far as the story. Season 3, I think, will lead to Avengers vs. X-Men. Maybe Season 4, Onslaught. But Onslaught's way down the line. Way, way down the line. That's all I'm saying. Rachel Summers has shown in the future, and they also show young Cable, Nathan Summers, before he's Cable, and they show him there uh, saying hi to them and shit. So their their older daughter is there and Nathan's son Nathan is there. So that's the future. But the other X-Men, or at least some of them, were sent to the pen. We don't know where Wolverine, Morph, and Storm are. But the other X-Men were sent to the past into Egypt. And they find this guy fighting these fucking Egyptians, cyborgs or whatever. And they ask him, Who are you? And he says, My name is En Sabanur. En Sabanor, which everyone knows as Apocalypse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which is exactly what I said fucking a long time ago that at the end of this, this is going to lead to Apocalypse somehow. They're going to bring him back. It's always Apocalypse. But yes, and Sabanor in Egypt, and they save him from all these people. And what bothers me is that none of them look surprised. None of them seem to care. Maybe they don't know that En Sabanur is Apocalypse. Maybe they don't know. Maybe they don't know. I'm not going to lie. But I would have thought that at the very least, Charles and Magneto would have figured it out that that's Apocalypse. But they don't seem surprised. They kind of like, hmm? They zoom out and you see this huge technologically built city and it's like a dome in the past and it looks futuristic but it's in Egyptian times and it doesn't didn't look like the pyramids or nothing. It's future it's like a dome, it's like a circle. It's like a fucking circle and then the rest of the fucking Egyptian city is built around it. 
but it's there. It almost looks like a spaceship. And I'm telling you, they're bringing in, in the past, Ramatut. Ramatut is literally Kang from the future, coming back to Egypt, Egyptian times and ruling and changing his name and calling himself Ramatut. Because Kang plays ruler throughout time as different things. That's Ramatut. That's why he has technology in the past. And he's enslaving people. And then Apocalypse is there. And he's also being enslaved by them. So the X-Men are going to help Apocalypse fight Kang in the past? I don't know if he's going to look like Ramatut in the comic books like this. Or if they're going to try to make it continue with you with the MCU. And he's going to look like the woman beater. Jonathan Majors. Imagine if they decide to make Rama Tut in the past look like Jonathan Majors because they're staying up. So he's going to play Kang or somebody else is going to play Kang. He's got to be black for sure. Kang in X-Men 97 is going to be a black guy. Rama Tut. I'm throwing it out there, but I think it's the truth. As far as the future, bros. Scott Summers, Jean Grey, I don't think Wolverine and Morph are in the past or Storm. Maybe Storm is in the future with them. But I think Wolverine and Morph might be in the past. It's because they didn't show where they went. They didn't show where Wolverine, Morph, or Storm went. They can either be in the future or in the past or divided. And Wolverine is in no state to do anything. He's like half dead trying to heal. And when he finally heals, he's going to turn feral. He's going to turn into that beast, Wolverine. I don't know how he's going to act at first. He might be feral. They have to tame him before he fucking becomes a member of the team. I don't know. So, I don't know. There's, there's so many stories they're borrowing here. But for sure, the X-Men in the future are going to be fighting Kang. So, season two is going to be Kang. Kang in the past and Kang in the future. The X-Men fighting Kang. Past and future. And here's the crazy part. Because it's going to be interweaving. With one more thing. And that is. The end of credit scene. The end of credit scene showed Apocalypse. Going to Genosha. And he fucking pulls out Gambit's card. He pulls out Gambit's card. And he fucking says, my children, so much pain. And then when the card pulls out, he goes, so much death. And that's just showing you what's also going to be included in season three. Is Apocalypse resurrects Gambit as his horseman of death. It's one of the whole four horsemen of the Apocalypse. And he's going to be death. Gambit. Like I said. They're following the comic books. But mostly they're borrowing from the comic books. And they're borrowing the best parts. I think they moved fairly fast in season one. And I didn't like it at first. But overall, I'm happy with it. There's literally one episode that I could have done without. Two episodes, probably. That I could have done without. They could have extended some of the other stuff. Um, But you know what? I think Bo DeMaio has done really fucking good with this series. I'm not going to lie. This is a very good fucking series. Uh, wow. It's probably the best shit Marvel has shitted out in the past five years. I'm not gonna lie. And it's animation. It's animation. For fuck six. I don't think the Marvel MCU live action movies 
of the X-Men are gonna be not even half as good as this show. This show is awesome. And and Kevin Feige and Marvel could never, ever replicate this in live action. Because they don't have the balls to do it in live action. They never will. This is as good as it's going to get as far as Marvel uh, quality goes. And this is only for season two. Like, season one and season two we know for sure are going to be good. Because we know season one was good. Season two was also written by the same guy. But this guy got fired for being a homosexual and having a, a fucking OnlyFans posting his dick online for teenagers who pay thirteen ninety nine a month to see that shit. And there's nothing wrong with it if they're paying for it. That's their choice and their decision, Disney. But for whatever is, reason, Disney said, we don't want this kind of pornographer uh, employed. So they fired his ass. I thought they fired him because he fucked up the X-Men 97. I said, oh, this guy wrote some fucking non-binary ass. And the only non-binary ass was Morph. And it wasn't that bad. Yeah, so Morph is gay for Wolverine. Big fucking deal. It's not that bad. Wolverine's not gay for Morph. So that's okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, There was some weird stuff that I feel. <laughs> this is from the comic books too. But there was some weird stuff where where Cyclops goes up to Wolverine's body as Wolverine is healing. And Cyclops says, Don't you dare break her heart. You better do what you do best and heal. And I was all like, oh my god. Because look, in the past five years, Jonathan Hickman wrote that Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Wolverine... All live together in the same household on the moon, the dark side of the moon. Um, as a couple, a tri force couple. So, yeah, Wolverine and fucking Cyclops in the comic books for the past five or six years have been spit roasting Jean Grey together. Uh, in unison. All communal. And I feel like when Cyclops said that to Wolverine, when he was in the fucking... I was like, holy shit, what's going on here? <laughs> Season 3? Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's a good series. I can't shit on it. I can't at all. Um, I did at first, because there was shit that pissed me off. Uh, but it's good. It's really good. Uh, I'm not going to lie or deny any of it. X-Men 97, a thumbs up and a cheers for Cinnamon and the Underground Broadcast. Cheers. Uh, but with that being said, and fuck you, Apocalypse. You need to go away, son of a bitch. With all being said, I think I have done some enough ranting for tonight, you motherfuckers. And uh, we're going to call it a night. But I'm going to leave you with a little bit of life advice. All right. Is that is don't give up on your dreams. Focus on what you want. And even though some days go bad, and you say, well, fuck it, I'm a, this is a stupid shit I'm doing, and, and fuck, they, you know, today was bad, and this is a, a foretelling that maybe I shouldn't be doing this. No, no, no. Fuck. Focus on what you want to do. And even if you have a bad day, continue to focus on the good stuff. All right. Perseverance is the lesson for tonight. Persevere. And keep moving forward to push harder because we in this channel so that everyone knows we actually hit 600 oh no was it 600 i near remember 600 subscribers it was 600 subscribers oh, yeah. so if us losers can do it then so can you cheers We'll see you next week, motherfuckers! What the fuck, man?
fucking running like lady, eh?